Don't worry, I'll, I'll not keep you long tonight, folks. This is your Jersey immediate post-match reaction pod. Five minutes, five minutes max. Coming to you in association with Forest Precision Engineering and our good friends at Football Prizes. That's if Forest Precision Engineering and Football Prizes still want any to do with folk podcasting about Rangers, God's sake. Because uh, my name's Alec Anderson and I'm quite frankly cowering here at the back of the, the Brimland stand as the mounted police gather on Edmondson Drive that the Batons are drawn. They're ready to charge into the mob that has just put the Sharks through the windows of the Rangers team bus. Uh, there's been seats ripped to the, the Govan, the Copeland, the Brimland, and they've all been fired through the windows of the main stand uh, on Edmondson Drive there. It's quite frankly, the Rangers supporters have had enough. We're just demonstrating the fact that we've had enough of this bunch of losers letting us down yet again. Uh, Rangers losing this match tonight by scoring three goals to Ross County's one. And the SPFL Premiership on the 14th of February, Wednesday, the 14th of February, 2024. I mean, you know, my partner's bad enough for a start. My partner is bad enough. You at least need to know that Rangers have won to find it in any way bearable. But I've got all this stuff worked out, you know, 95 years ago today in a, a garage in Lincoln Park in Chicago. There was seven guys uh, Tommy gunned to death. I think a few of them get finished off with, you know, shotgun shots to the face. One guy got 14 bullets put him and he survived, actually, for a few hours, but he died later on and they were killed most likely by Al Capone's uh, Southside the guys from the Southside Al Capone's outfit in the bootlegging days in, in Chicago um, it was supposed to be all members of the Northside gang Irish American gang but only five of these seven guys were actually members of the, the Northside gang and before the game kicked off the night, Rangers had scored seven goals less uh, than Celtic, but we'd conceded five goals less. And I had this whole thing, you know, the five goals and the seven goals and the five members of the North Side gang, seven guys killed it. It was, oh, it was going to be absolutely... So I don't know I don't know if they had a, a nickname in for that uh, the massacre, the, the, the Lincoln Park garage that's no longer their massacre. But this is uh, Valentine's Day, and is there a more romantic songwriter than Cole Porter? I don't think so, and uh, he did a song called it's from the from the musical uh, Anything Goes, you know, which it always does. Uh, run about Ibrox and and that there's actually there's a guy who's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's like a crap gangster. He's was it Public Enemy number thirteen. He calls himself you no know, in the reference. It was only written um, what, six years after the um, the Lincoln Park uh, garage that's no longer there massacre. And he did a song called Porter and that musical called You're the Top. No, you're the top, you're the Coliseum. You know, and Ibrox tonight was going to be the Coliseum uh, with the crowd being for the, the blood of, of Ross County and to get us back uh, top of the table. And uh, really, at times tonight, it was actually a Coliseum, but I think the, the confusion came in where we were looking to be three nothing up before we went one nothing up. And I, I felt like I, I was saying to the, the guy that sits in front of me, it's a bit like a European game when you feel you've got to recover a deficit for the first leg. Second midweek in a row where Ibrox has straight strangely felt with an SPFL Premiership going on that it's like a that it's like a, a, a European game and sometimes when you've got the big deficits to recover you don't manage it because you, you're already knackered at the thought of how many goals you've got to score and Rangers really giving it their all tonight but there was a, there was something off balance about we're kind of I don't know we're, we're vibe you know we're, we're chakras we're kind of misaligned or whatever and anyway and so you're the top you're the coliseum you're the top you're the Louvre Museum no, so hang it in the Louvre that was going to be an easy link there hang it in the Louvre uh, say for example you would take the, the second goal of the three we scored tonight all three of them assisted by the captain James Tavernier what a loser he is uh, so he puts a, a ball all the way for the right wing right over to the, back with the six yard box dead in between two Ross County centre halves where is one Cyril Dessers waiting to receive the ball? He nods it down uh, into the, the bottom corner of the, the net and then he turns away and runs away doing a, a kind of uh, Bruce Forsyth type celebration towards the, the bottom corner of the, the, the Broomland stand. So that was going to hang that in the Louvre. You're you the top, you're the Coliseum, you're the top, you're the Louvre Museum. You're a melody from a symphony by Strauss. And I was hoping it was going to be Strauss's um, you know, opus number 53. I think it would be much better if it was 56, wouldn't it? But that's his Symphonia Domestica, which is all about domestic bliss. And Rangers have won the only domestic trophy that's available to be won so far this season. Uh, we got ourselves through the quarterfinals of the other uh, major domestic cup competition on uh, Saturday there. And, uh, well, <laughs> the idea was we were going to go top top of the league tonight, but we're, we're, we're not the top. You know, same thing by Strauss. You know, a Bendel bonnet. Well, I've got the, the, the welder's uh, bonnet here, thanks to Finlay Cameron. What a guy. Um, 
You're in a Shakespeare sonnet. Of course, I was going to Shakespeare sonnet number 18, you know, shall I compare it to a summer's day? They are more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of me and summer's leaf is, is all too short. And that's only the first uh, quatrain of, of, of that sonnet, but it's, you know, it's, it's Valentine's Day, so it's a, a really most famously romantic uh, sonnet in the, 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 the cycle there by Old Wally. Um, and it's, you know, summer's leaf has all too short a date, and you're thinking, well, the, the summer, need the summer transfer. Window and get a pre-season uh, into into as we're going to be even better because we're already top of the league. You know how much better are we going to get? And there was summer's lease there. It was all too short a date because uh, Michael Beale didn't know who he was doing. You know, and we were absolutely crap during the summer. Uh, we saw the signs with the, the friendlies we were playing. I had it all worked out and how much better we are. And we've gone top of the league and it's it's going to be great. We're going to get a bit better, but we didn't go uh, top of the league. Uh, Bendel Bonnet, Shakespeare sonnet. You're Mickey Mouse. That's the next thing, Mickey Mouse. Um, I'm going to go back to the sonnets because I've just changed it. It's not going to be sonnet number. 18 the first cut. I'm going to go with the uh, the, the, the rhyming couplet at uh, the end, the last two lines uh, from sonnet number 94, I think it is. For sweetest things turn sourest by their deeds, lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds. Yes, you're Mickey Mouse, as Cole Porter says. And that's what it is, just Mickey Mouse. Just keep pretending we're going to go to the league and totally failing every time uh, we get the opportunity. Disgusted, absolutely. Uh, rank the the, um, uh, the part was all worked out that was going to be sensational but Rangers weren't sensational well they looked that were going to be sensational again it was the it was the midweek team it was the it was the night shift that was was back tonight the, the eight changes probably I think for, for Saturday's starting line up against Air United and uh, Yilmaz is back at, at left back you'd it's now Lundstrom and uh, Lawrence starting as the two kind of sitting midfielders supposedly for the, the second midweek in the trot which they did against Aberdeen but of course, Tom Lawrence actually ends up being a kind of second ten next to Todd Cantwell. If anybody can be next to Todd Cantwell, the, the amount of energy, the movement he puts into a game, I think it's pretty sensational tonight. Todd Cantwell again, and uh, you had Rabbi Matondo back starting uh, outside left, if you like the the, the three. Uh, Ross McCoy's on, on the right hand side. Cyril Dessers up front, and I think that was, that was a good move. He's a bit slower, Cyril, but you know when you a defence you're up against Ross County that was struggling uh, this season in the relegation playoff zone just you know get rid of a manager their, their um, assistant manager taking over to, tonight Don Cowie and you're thinking yeah they're, they're going to be sitting back they're, they're not going to be coming out to play so we're going to have to break through them so the play will be kind of slowed down when about the six yard box we don't need somebody to you know kind of run in behind uh, we did that's exactly what that's exactly what Cyril Dessers did uh, Ross County come for the first kind of attack, a first sortie upfield of the match. They come up the park, uh, we broke on them straight away, and James Tavernier doing what was obviously the tactic. I mean, it's, it's, it's generally the tactic of Philip Clement anyway, just to be more direct, get the ball forward faster. Everybody knows that now. But we're really going for it tonight. Uh, as soon as they came forward, just, Tav just plays a lovely ball over the top. Listen, I, I've learned uh, doing these post-match reaction pods, then going back and watching the actual game on television. I have, a, I have a, a tendency to exaggerate the brilliance of everything that Rangers do positively. I think I had uh, Silva's goal against Red United on Saturday doing as a kind of like thirty-five yarder or something. It was like six yards. It was when he scored that one. So to me, anyway, like, Tav seemed to be kind of halfway line at best that was the furthest forward he was and he just played a lovely ball forward over the top of the, the Ross County defence and there was Cyril Dessers just judging his run beautifully uh, took it on his his right arm his left arm and played a bit of basketball with it you know, and then he slotted it calmly under the goalkeeper to put his one nothing up I think it was the sixth minute and you're like, everybody's gone crazy, because the whole idea tonight, of course, was we're going, if we win by three, we go top of the league. If we win by three, we go top of the league. This is going to be an absolute goal fest. We're going to pile it on. Why, oh, why did I get it in my head? Why did I notice that we do this thing? Uh, a few weeks ago, we looked, at, as I was saying in one of the post-match reaction pods, uh, it looked like we were just scoring all our goals in the middle of the game. This is how we worked under Philip Clement. If we're going to score three goals, as we did against Livingston, you'd probably be... Um, um, uh, the, the first of this run of four home games we would probably get one in about a 25 minute mark or something then another one perhaps before half time and have the third just be on the hour mark and that's it everything's all nice and tidy we can get uh, all the bodies off get the substitutes on and work on the, the squad the squad fitness um, but ever since I've said that we've, that's us, we scored really early against Aberdeen we scored really early against Air United and getting the second goal took a long time it wasn't even the second it wasn't even the same half of the game in those games so it became really important that we did get a second goal when Ross County equalised tonight 
And isn't that the, always the way? Isn't that always the way? As I said, it had a kind of European feel about it. The only team, ironically, that we Rangers have recovered a two-goal first-leg deficit from um, against was, well, a Belgian side, Union St. Gilles. And we've got a Belgian manager now. And it just I felt as if they... It's not unfair. I mean, the league table is not in any way unfair. It's because uh, we, we don't just stop and, and say, right, it wasn't working out with Michael Beale. Let's ignore that the points tally that we had under him. Can we just start again and, and kind of uh, backdate it like Philip Clement? And that'd be like stopping the last eight games of the season. Uh, no playing name and just try to work out a, a points average from the, the games you'd played before. Football doesn't work like that. You know, uh, you've got to play the actual games. But uh, I thought it was quite unfortunate. The, the, the three goal thing last week against Aberdeen, same situation. If we score three goals, we go top of the league. If we win by three goals, sorry, we go top of the league. But everybody knows how Aberdeen play against us generally and I think we all recognise as well that Aberdeen actually got a really good squad and that Barry Robson did deserve to get sacked for no making more of them we've had tough games against Aberdeen this season uh, so we're actually quite we knew there was a new manager bounce as well as been quite happy to get rid of uh, Barry Robson so we were expecting a tough game and we got one and we stayed behind the team and we really were just concerned with getting the three points Tonight, I don't know what happened at the goal. And this is, I mean, this, this is what I mean about me not being able to do match reports because I'm too invested in the game. Stone Cold Sober, again. Um, the ball <laughs> it's got, it's got launched forward, I think, by Ross County. And it was right in front of me. I, mean, I had a perfect view of it as well. Conor Golson coming in towards the uh, touch line, the, the main stand side, right in front of me, right below me. And I don't know what happened. I don't know how we, we made a mess of it. I don't want to judge because it was too harsh on Conor Golson. Um, not having seen the game back through camera eyes when I was talking after the, the Aberdeen game of the goal we lost to them. That was, was a great goal by Mayovsky, a great goal by Aberdeen in general. Uh, and you're always going to complain about your own team when you concede goals. You're always going to see it from your own point of view. It's always going to be a mistake. But I, I don't want it, it looked like it was pretty bad. The fact that you know, Ross County then got the ball, hit the byline, pulled it back and uh, slammed it into the, the, the net. It was, it was kind of one, one of those perfectly placed balls. It's a standard move after that. After we lost the ball when it got launched forward, I don't know if it took a bounce or whatever, but it, it became pretty standard, a kind of training ground thing from then on where, where Ross County hit the byline, pull it back. And uh, is it Simon Money, I think? Great finish, uh, but it's, it's kind of finished. You've, you've, you've got to be having your locker if you're going to be an attacking player in professional football when you're presented with the ball in that position. So he slams it high uh, above Jack Butland and that's it. It's one each on the half hour and this is not going according to script. After we opened the scoring, when we seem to be very much on script, I think Cyril Dessers then hits the post, did he hit the left-hand post and then the right-hand post? And then we had a few tabs of a few shots. There was a lot of drilling the ball really fast, drilling it really hard. If he won kind of wing to the other, supposed to be firing it into the six-yard box, but we getting overhit by Ross McCausland. And, and then Cyril Dessers get played through again. A lot of good balls from, from Tav, but Tav was also like hoofing them over the bar as well and overhitting his, his crosses. And we're doing the in-swing in corners. A, a, a series of corners, which we didn't really make anything from. But I think the attitude was... You know, maybe the instruction from the manager just just hit them, just hit them hard, just just fire right into them. He's talking in his press conference yesterday. He's pre-match presser for this game about how he wanted to uh, you know, get through the wall. You have to get through the wall when you're playing a team like Ross County. The situation there, and that was the first thing in hand. That was the first kind of task, and the main task was to get all three points. Uh, and the local Rangers were trying to kind of knock that wall down with sheer brute force at times, just hitting the ball as hard as possible. But it wasn't. We weren't quite getting the finish. And, and it's at that point I started to feel kind of. And it's easy to say in retrospect, you know. But before count equalised, I think around the twenty-five minute mark, there was a kind of air of disappointment. So we're not going to get that second quick goal again. We're not going to get that second quick goal. We will, we did it at Fir Park against Motherwell, and then we just won the game two 0 You know, we scored like three minutes and then sixteen minutes. Yeah, on Christmas Eve and we've scored two quick goals when we scored the first one round about the half hour mark you know we got a quick you know, one within 10 minutes after that but this as I say the last few games where we've scored really early against Aberdeen really early against Ayr only got one more goal and it was kind of you know well into the, the, the 70 minutes or, or so into the second half uh, tonight you're worried it's going to be the same thing but the county having equalised and Rangers I think it's, I, see, I think the kind of malaise starts running about the 20-25 minute mark where Rangers have gone out there with an attitude of blowing Ross County away and it's not quite happened and I think maybe there was a few a few moans for the crowd at that point um, which is really unfair and really unrealistic 
Uh, and anyway, they get their equaliser, Ross County, but we come back at them, say, great ball for Tav. Um, but there was this moment, there was this moment, and then you know, John Lundstrom gave you a row. If you're in the Copeland, John Lundstrom gave you a row. He told you to calm down. Aye, that must have been an absolute beamer for you. you know? And Abby's fine. He didn't, didn't say anything to me. I'm in, I'm, in the, I'm in the main stand. I wasn't complaining at all. <laughs> it's one each, and it's a corner to Ross County. And fuck, are starting to be for blood, you know. And uh, Lundstrom just turns around. He's in the six yard box, getting, marking his man, just looking like, hey, just come on. Calm down, take it easy. Um, and he was quite right as well. So we, we got that goal, and he turned round and immediately just celebrated. Not a kind of like, you know, Cammy Fraser against St. Mirren all the years ago, <laughs> Gerrit Rooney's. It was just a kind of, there you go, guys. Thanks. You know, let's have a wee celebration together now. I gave you the row. You took it like men. Um, you took it like adults, sorry. And uh, you know, everything, everything's fine now. So we did the tunnel 2 1. And then we got the goal in injury time in the first half. And that's, again, what, third, fourth game in a row where we've been facing a team at Ibrox so just hitting the deck just hitting the deck every two seconds trying to time waste what have you but when County got the ball when they had the ball they were sharp they were they were right up for it they're obviously enjoying as we suspected eh, no manager bounce because the, the, we all saw Derek Adams comments when he was back there for his third stint as Ross County manager he was a, a depressed man he just seemed embarrassed to be at Ross County and I, I just can't imagine he was spreading many happy vibes throughout that camp so they definitely looked like they were up for it County and having survived the, the early storm only a goal down in Getting the equaliser, they were they were kind of invigorated and always dangerous looking uh, on the counter. Our defence wasn't the best. We just had John Lundstrom back there a lot of time. He was playing a kind of single pivot in front of the it's really the back two. We just kept the two centre halves back there, and even then corners and what have you, free kicks. Uh, Big John Souter and Connor Golson were, were up into the, the, the Ross County box and it was just Tav <laughs> running the halfway line and John Lundstrom not far behind him, just, just waiting to, to sweep stuff up. So we're just Everybody was just piling forward all night. I thought John, uh, Tom Lawrence is looking really good. He gets back to full fitness. He he seems to just take the ball and suddenly be in space and he'll, he'll lay it off quickly and he'll fire a shot. And he's got this thing that we got the goal against Aberdeen. He'll fire in a cracking shot uh, that, that, that you're hoping for a deflection from. But that wasn't happening tonight. You're, you're hoping for the goalkeeper to spill it. That wasn't happening tonight. They, I don't even know the name of the Ross County goalkeeper. Forgive me, that's terrible. But uh, just to wear an all red kit, which I was sick of the sight of uh, by the end of the game, which is the best compliment I can pay him. It just the, the amount of times the ball just seemed to go straight to him and he caught it. And this is, I think, is also the problem. You get a, a quick first goal, but you don't get the second. But you're maintaining the amount of pressure. Uh, that, that we were tonight, the goalie get the opposition goalie gets practice. You know, he gets warmed up. He starts getting a feel for it. He starts getting a feel for making all these saves. And I don't know how many goalkeepers we've seen having a great game uh, at Ibrox, but that's 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 the way it should be. We should be you know, pummeling goalkeepers and giving them as much practice as possible. But uh, you're hoping we could have worked a bit better and we're, we're shooting and we're finishing. And uh, but Cyril Dessers, he went through the full gamut tonight. He did the. the the silky finishes, he did the, the classic timing, the great runs, he did the, the terrible misses, he did the taking the face off Rabi Matondo for, for slagging him. I think Rabi Matondo just basically said to him at one point, would well, you know, pass it back to me for her, you know, that shop's crap. And uh, Cyril wasn't happy, he wasn't having that at all. So he's doing a bit of mourning as well as doing the super smooth celebrations with the Union Bears. He went through the full thing tonight, Cyril Dessers, and he was unlucky. Uh, Rabi Matondo went off at half time. And on came on the left hand side. Who come on? Cortez, 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 and uh, to, to replace him at half time. So the manager was obviously. Uh, I don't know if he was just taking him off because he gave. He was. He was. He was ruin, ruining Cyril Dessers' chi. Uh, but Rabbi Matondo wasn't having the, the, the greatest game in the world. So off he went at half time, and Cyril Dessers. A couple of shots on goal, second half, a couple of more chances, nearly got a goal just before the, the boards went up and he went off and on came uh, Silva to replace him and his movement and all that was absolutely fantastic. There was a strange, it was a, again, we're, we're piling on the pressure, lots of corners, but it was all, uh, all out swingers in the second half. And I don't know if it gets slower, we're 2-1 up and the game's kind of frittering away, time's frittering away, the manager just wants to make sure that we've got our two you know, wing backs in the right position, in the right, you know, in their proper position, so to speak. Doesn't want to risk having them crossing the park at all. Uh, I don't, but I, I thought we could have done varying the corners a wee bit in the second half. But uh, their goalie was having a good game. Our shooting wasn't the best in the world. But I, I think Tom Lawrence is great at taking the ball, turning and just you know having a shot or, or finding somebody. And uh, with Todd Cantwell almost beside him, really, as I say, if anybody can be beside the, the spinning Catherine wheel that is Todd Cantwell, uh, he's, they're, they're a great attacking threat. And at times, not was getting through the wall, but 
Todd Grant was kind of like the ivy that was crawling all over this wall, trying to find wee nooks, trying to find wee, wee breaks in the in the cement and the point and to get through and get through to the other side. He was absolutely everywhere, uh, getting involved in a, a rumpus at the end of the game as well, one of their centre-halves, taking kickings, giving out kickings, getting, uh, getting booked as well and that kind of thing. But he was, I thought he was really good tonight, Cantwell. Uh, but I, it gets into injury time. And I remember the board goes up. It's still 2-1 to Rangers. And the board goes up and it said seven minutes. I didn't know whether to be happy or sad about it. And I think that summed up the strange mood, the strange psychological mood uh, around this game tonight. Can I mood be in another psychological, Alec? I don't know, the strange psychological feel, uh, the malaise perhaps. Uh, all physically, Rangers looked all out, all action, piling it on. I felt as if... There was a kind of, we don't know whether to stick or twist almost. And when the board went up for seven minutes, I, I just thought, I don't know if I want seven minutes. Because it's got the look of a game where Ross County are going to have two shots on goal and score with the two of them. And we're going to end up, we're so focused. Kind of in a slightly entitled fashion, perhaps. I know, we, you know we're Rangers, we expect nothing but the best. But we're maybe going to be thinking, nah... You know, we really need to pile forward and get this goal, get get the get the three goal wins so we can go top of the league, and we end up giving away an equaliser, and we don't even get the three points. But a uh, tav in our corner that comes back out, tav fires it in again at the back post, and there's a uh, big John Souter nodding it in, and it's it's three one, and the points were in the bag, and then have four minutes of frantically hoping Rangers can get that goal that's going to put us top of the league, and they've been playing this season. When you look at remember the game against Hearts and we're actually getting beat and we score two goals uh, in injury time to, to win the game, turn it around and get the three points, you'd expect maybe this is there's something special about this team under Clermont and maybe that's what was going to happen. It wouldn't have surprised you if that'd been the way it happened, but in the end up we get the we get the three points, we couldn't get another goal. But uh, I thought Silva was fantastic as well when he came on. Fantastic movement, fantastic determination. He doesn't let anything go, there's a real sharpness about him. He's a kind of player and he's running. He does the kind of stuff that you know, an idiot like me always picks up on, you know. I'm like, why is he no chasing him down? Why is he, Why are you giving up on that ball? He never gives up on anything. Um, uh, uh, see, when I was playing five sides, you know, believe it or not, I used to play five sides. You know, I can't even say five stone ago, um, or ten stone ago. It was just I was I was this massive when I played five sides. I would just I would just you know lie across the goals, going goals. But the thing I would always be shouting was, oh, face it, face it. I hate when folk turned their back and they play. It was these simple things like that that always got me. Having a readiness, having a sharpness, is the main thing. And uh, I think Silva seems to. Uh, Epitomise that Fabio Silva. He was, he was, he was. When he came on, he really put in a cracking shift. Uh, unlucky. I thought we should have had a penalty. I thought he was getting pulled down as he pulled into the box after you know deep in injury time. We were three one up. Uh, but no, didn't happen anyway. And the main thing was to get three points. But there absolutely is there absolutely is a genuine sense of disappointment. And I think it's only natural when you've come so close. But this, I'm talking a little bit symphonies and. Melodies and that kind of thing, but I don't know if it's a, a prelude or a, an intermezzo. Maybe the the winter break with the, in, in, in the SPFL was the, was the intermezzo. But this little program, this little passage of games, I don't know, a blue period, the Picasso's blue period, Verdi's middle period, I don't know what you want to call it. It's been really, it's been a moment in time, these four successive home games, and I think you pin. You pin the, the three away games we had before that, after the winter break, onto them as well. It, there was a moment where it looked like the game, their first game back after the winter break, that Scottish Cup tie against Dumbarton, uh, the storm that it was that kind of totally took over uh, Dumbarton, uh, the rock that day. The weather, I'm just along the road from it, the weather's absolutely horrendous, and you thought this game is going to get called off. It's, and I don't know, if maybe if it hadn't been on Viaplay, it would have. Uh, the game went ahead, terrible conditions, but it was at that point, we, we knew we'd lost at Parkhead, we'd been unlucky, I don't like the term unlucky, but you know what I mean, we'd been uh, we'd, pretty close, it wasn't as if we were played off the park at Parkhead that day, various things went against us, they can go against you in football matches, you have to take that kind of stuff on the chin, and um, I thought right, that, that's fine, it's all about the reaction now, it wasn't a disgrace to lose that game. And we come back and we did win against Kilmarnock at home. Nice, great, solid win to put us back in fine, finer fettle before we went off on that break. But when, that game against Dumbarton, had that been postponed that day, we then had had the two league games. You know, we were eight points behind two league games in hand. You think we've got to win two league games just to get two points behind Celtic? Points on the board is always better. That, that, could, be, that could be dodgy. Uh, and the, the game against them had been postponed. I just felt as if that was going to be too much. Uh, with everything that everyone were playing for, was been through to the last 16 in Europe uh, and, and, and the Europa League. It was just going to things were going to start to pile up, and we're never going to be able to to catch Celtic in the league. And uh, no, but here we are. We're only we're only one goal behind them from being, you know, 
eight points behind them. Now we're only one goal behind them, uh, barely uh, a month later, and it's 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 cracking, folks. You know, well, there's a bit of frustration there. Um, maybe we did need to go top of the league tonight psychologically. It's all the psychology with me. What am I like? Um, I'm so deep. <laughs> uh, but maybe we needed to go top of the league tonight because I think everything changes from now on. That's why I'm talking this wee passage of games. Uh, they're all winnable matches, but so often with Rangers in recent years, they haven't been winnable. And we've not been in this situation at this time of year. At this time of year, we've not been in this situation in front of Rangers supporters. I was talking about this after the game last Tuesday. Uh, a lot of people slagging us for you know, our treating the Aberdeen game. It was like, like a European match, the atmosphere, because it was so significant. Because for us as a, as a club, what we've been through, down in the lower leagues and what have you, it's, you know, we're looking at 2011. The last time Rangers were, were, were top of the league or up there, a goal off the top of the league, uh, proper contenders. At this time of the year, we only have 13 games for both Rangers and Celtic to play in the in the Premiership. And also what we've went through, particularly the first couple of seasons under Stephen Gerrard, where we would win the Old Firm game just before New Year and then come back after winter break and collapse. We've done it the other way about. This time we've just narrowly lost that old firm game before New Year and we've come back and we've just won every single game. I think it's that's seven games since the winter break. I mean, the, the trips to, you look at the calendar there, you look at the fixture list and you're thinking we've got to go to Easter Road, we've got to go to St Mirren, you know, even Aberdeen at Ibex. These are dodgy games, these are, these are potential uh, banana skins. No, we've come through every single one of them and we are now one goal uh, behind Celtic at the top of the league and it's the situation where you know, maybe Celtic could go and pit five past Kilmarnock in Saturday. Maybe this, maybe this will inspire them to a new level. But we then have the chance, you know, at least to go and win the game and stay at St Johnston on Sunday. And I think that will be different. You know, Craig Levine gave Celtic a hard time for one half of a trip to McDermott uh, earlier in the season. The wily old uh, fox that is Craig Levine, he'll have St Johnston right up for this. It's, it's a place we've found it difficult uh, in the recent past, McDermott Park. So I think we then find out, you know, uh, what was it? a week on Friday who our opponents are going to be in the last 16 of the Europa League and that tie will be played either side of a trip to Easter Road in the Scottish Cup and I know I've scalped Hibs twice but it's like a team that we maybe scalped them four times in the league that's the very team that's going to pick you at the Scottish Cup it's particularly when you've got your eyes on other things so I think it might have been good to give us that kind of psychological advantage tonight because things might get quite draining if we feel in any way that we're trying to properly catch up with Celtic, try to drag that back. It might drain you of psychological energy that you just don't have when you're, you're trying to win. There's still basically three fronts we're, we're fighting on now, having had front number one under our belt. But I think it's this little one of four home games, the, the end of it gives us time to, I, I think, it's, it's an appropriate time just to say about the manager. Uh, He's, he's just come in and he's worked minor miracles. He really has worked minor miracles. But I think Celtic are still favourites for the title. Being the holders and not having Europe to play in, you know, as we as we go on through this season, it's um, yeah, that's going to be a big thing for them. They, they're only and it's it's a it's a story Celtic are used to. It's a rhythm they're into uh, in, in the twenty first century. Basically, they just focus on winning the league and getting themselves into the Champions League money. But I I, I feel as if. For us to have been completely relaxed, was it seven points behind when Clermont arrived um, and, and eight points behind, strictly speaking, even though with the two games in hand, uh, getting into the new year and for us now to be a, a goal behind, having not slipped up in any game at all, having won every single game uh, of 2024 is absolutely remarkable. The manager is he's different class. Look, supporters have got... I think football supports... Uh, it's, it's an amazing thing, doesn't it matter? You're into it and you, you, know, you listen to me talking absolute crap, but even I've got this facility of it's a, it's a kind of context calculator. Every football fan's got it, it's an instinctive thing. It's, it's a, the context of how your club's doing, how you judge them is about what you're realistically expecting them. And I know there's we've got hysterical stuff, folk probably there's probably folk online just now, a range of supporters ranting and raving about how we missed a chance to go to the league, it'll be absolutely vital, it's a total failure, etc. etc. But the vast majority, I think that's like the vapor trail, you know, on a plane, the kind of. I know Halley's rocket, the, the the light, the smoke coming out the back of it. You know that, that's that's all the kind of hysteria you know, from folk who hate you and folk who you know, Rangers Rangers supporters, etc. Supporters of a team who expect too much of their team. But the the kind of main body, you know, the actual the actual aeroplane, the actual you know the the, the, the actual celestial. <laughs> 
home body, whatever it is, the, the, the main core of the support, they know. They just, it's just Look at right, what I'm trying to say. We played Air United. We played Air United on, on Saturday there. Um, what a support they brought up to Ibrox. I know, it was, you know it's not very far from Air up to Glasgow, but half past five on a Saturday, a game that's live on the telly, you could be watching you know, the, the, the great pubs in Air. Even my manager likes going to them. I think that was a fantastic support, and I was thinking, are Air the biggest team never to have won anything? Never, never won a, a, a major domestic trophy, Air United, and I think, are they, they must be the biggest in terms of support. You've got Hamilton Ackies, they've they lost a couple of Scottish Cup finals, and Air have only reached one major domestic final, and I was there um, against Air when we beat them in the, the 2002 League Cup final at Hamden. And that's the only time they've ever reached a major domestic final. Um, Hamilton Aki's lost two Scottish Cup finals and they've been in the top flight a lot longer or recently anyway than, than Air United were so I don't know how you might judge that they definitely got the support Air United have got I think maybe maybe Queen of the South uh, who've reached it well I was there when they lost their only uh, major cup final in, in 2008 against the Scottish Cup I'm thinking you're, you're saying something like one nothing to have won nothing and that's so cruel because you know, these teams are playing the, the Challenge Cup which we really enjoyed winning they've won lower league titles which we wanted to win um, in our times in the lower leagues we're, we're proud to win them I think uh, I, I was on, I remember being on the train going out to Hamden the, the day that 2002 League Cup final and there was Air United supporters on the train who obviously were only at the second or third football match of their life and they were just having a great time they were just loving it it was absolutely fantastic that's the us you know, imagine Real Madrid had to play in a Europa League final they'd be absolutely devastated it'd be an embarrassment for them um, but for us it was absolutely fantastic you know football supporters they understand their own context although we all talk to rival fans about how we want to win everything and we want to be the best we think we are the best I think we automatically understand where the club is coming from, the situation, our history, the point in history we're at, how much money we've got, how badly we're playing last season. And we feel up like Clement, the time he's come in and the state we were in under uh, a certain uh, Michael Beal and looking at the signings, look at Cyril Dessers tonight, what's that, 12, 13 goals, 14 goals, I don't know what he's at, but he's, he's, he could have had a hat-trick easily tonight. He scored the two goals that have put us up there, level on points with Celtic at the top of the league in February. Um, and the only other time we've been this well off in the last, uh, what is it, 13 years was the season we, we won the title 2020, 2021, uh, unbeaten and more. We had that one practically by the end of February because Celtic completely collapsed that season. But we're putting ourselves up there to make sure that if, if Celtic do collapse further, they might have already had their collapse this season, uh, we'll be there to take advantage of it. And I think that's, uh, in the circumstances, the Rangers support understands that is almost kind of miraculous, the transformation this man has affected. I mean, when have you ever heard of a, a, like a Dutch manager, be realistic, you know, a, a Dutch-speaking manager coming in and winning a treble in his first season with Rangers? Come on, you know, or a, a Dutch-speaking manager coming in and taking us to a European final. Um, <laughs> that's just absolute nonsense. So I, I think we, we know even if we haven't gone top of the league tonight and even if we don't win the league ultimately this season to be in this situation in February uh, halfway through February after what we went through at the beginning of the season is absolutely fantastic and this manager of ours is uh, like he's great he's great we didn't go top of the league tonight does that mean we're a, a worthless check a, a total wreck a flop no baby we're not bottom we're, we're joint top almost <laughs> You know, uh, a heat thing. A heat thing. If you, you can switch off new folks if you want. I'm just going to do my usual stuff. I know a lot of folk out there like the the heat stuff. Um, you know, Michael Mann film 1995. Well, I just have to say, I, I realised today. I, I, I think I always end up sympathising more with De Niro and uh, De Niro's crew in, in that film, and that's ridiculous because they're, they're, they're murderers. They're cold blooded murderers. You know, as uh, Vincent Hanna, as Michael, as um, Al Pacino's character, Vincent Hanna says to you know De Niro's character, uh, Neil Macaulay. You know, you don't have to be there. You know, if you're going to you know make some poor guy a, a widow, you know, and then brother, you are going down kind of thing. And I think I've just realised that Rangers this season, we are the Heat, we are the LAPD, we are the police department, um, and it's Clermont. All right, God forgive me. Um, you know what it's like when your when your manager signs for you, you try to find everything you possibly can. You'll do internet searches, and I did see it was an article, and it was in the Sun. It was in the Sun, and uh, forgive me, I did read it. Um, and it was all about Clement. Uh, his, his wife, he'd split up for his first wife um, because she lacked his ambition. She didn't share his ambition. She just wanted to basically, you know, have weekends with her own kids and her, and her man, you know, <laughs> whereas he wanted to, no, I just want to be football, you know, 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week, and if you don't match my ambition, you know, so she wanted just like, you know, she wanted the barbecues and the ball games, whereas he just wants, he just wants the ball games, and it's that scene, it's that scene where, 
Uh, Neil McCauley goes to meet Nate, you know, played by John Voigt, to find out when he starts spying on the police that are that are, uh, are spying on him. And uh, John Voigt says to him, or Nate, uh, based on the real life character like Eddie Bunker, uh, who's a, a pal of Michael Mann's, um, he's saying to him, you know, he's, he's asked him all about Vincent Hanna that the police, and he says, oh, Vincent Hanna, you know, this. Uh, he thinks you're a great guy, you know. He's he's always saying, he's always telling the vice sergeant, uh, you know, look how great this guy is, look how look how smart this crew is to, to realise this and to do that. I think you're a star, and uh, and De Niro starts laughing, and John Voigt's like, ah, you know, funny as a heart attack, man. This is one of those guys, you know. He says, he says three manages, three manages. What do you think that means? He's one of those guys out there all night rooting around, uh, dedicated. <laughs> With this much heat, you should pass. And I think Brendan Rodgers just sees. Um, he sees our current manager and he thinks uh, two marriages. What do you think that means? He's one of those guys. He's out there all night, dedicated. I uh, Philip Clement is absolutely coming to get you, and uh, this is uh, it's 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 no the the perfect night, but I think you can get too many of them too early. I think we're better just now, just on Celtic's uh, back wheel, and we're almost touching spokes. Listen, folks, that's more than enough for me. It's going to be John and Craig on the Friday night uh, preview pod or heavily reviewing tonight's game and looking forward to our trip to McDermott uh, and until then is there anything else uh, for me to cover with you? No, I think we're all caught up